Hey guys, so we're now going to be moving on to our fourth president, James Madison. James Madison was born in 1751 and passed away in 1836, was a founding father of the United States and the fourth American president, serving in office from 1809 to 1817. An advocate for a strong federal government, the Virginia born Madison composed the first drafts of the U.S. Constitution and the Bill of Rights and earned the nickname Father of the Constitution. In 1792, Madison and Thomas Jefferson founded the Democratic Republican Party, which has been called America's first opposition political party. When Jefferson became the third U.S. president, Madison served as his Secretary of State. In this role, he oversaw the Louisiana Purchase from the French in 1803. During his presidency, Madison led the U.S. into the controversial War of 1812, which lasted from 1812 to 1815 against Great Britain. After two terms in the White House, Madison retired to his Virginia plantation, Montepeller, with his wife, Dolly Madison, or I'm sorry, Dolly, who was born in 1768, passed in 1849. James Madison was born on March 16th, 1751, in Port Conway, Virginia, to James Madison Sr. and Nellie Conway Madison. Uh, the eldest of 12 children, Madison was raised on the family plantation Montepeller in Orange County, Virginia. At the age of 18, Madison left Montepeller to attend the College of New Jersey, which is now Princeton University. Uh, did you know? Montepeller, James Madison's Virginia plantation home, was established by his grandfather in 1723. An est estimated 100 enslaved people lived at Montepeller when Madison owned it. The property was sold after his death. Today, the estate, which covers some 2,600 acres, is open to the public. Um, after graduation, Madison took an interest in, excuse me, in the relationship between the American colonists and Great Britain, which had a grown tr uh, tremendous or ter ter pretty much rocky over the British taxation. Um, when Virginia began preparing for the American Revolution War, Madison was appointed to a colonial or colonel in the Orange County Militia. Small in stature, and sickly, he soon gave up a military career for a political one. In 1776, he represented Orange County at the Virginia Con uh, Constitution Convention to organize a new state government, no longer under British rule. During his work in the of Virginia legislature, Madison met lifelong friend Thomas Jefferson, author of the Declaration of Independence and at the third president of the United States. As a politician, Madison often fought for religious freedom, believing it was an individual's right from birth. In 1780, Madison became a Virginia delegate to the Continental Congress in Philadelphia. He left Congress 
in 1783 to return to the Virginia Assembly and work on a religious freedom statute. Although he would soon be called back to Congress to help create a new constitution. After the colonies declared independence from Britain in 1776, the Articles of Confederation were created as the first constitution of the United States. The Articles were ratified in 1781 and gave most of the power to the individual state legislatures, who acted more like individual countries than a union. This structure left the National Congress weak, with no ability to properly manage federal debt or maintain a national army. Madison, after undertaking an extensive study of other world governments, came to the conclusion that America needed a strong federal government in order to help regulate the state legislatures and create a better system for raising federal money. He felt the government should be set up with a system of checks and balances, so no branch had greater power over the other. Madison also suggested that governors and judges have enhanced roles in the government in order to help manage the state legislature. In May of 1787, delegates from each state came together at the con uh, Constitutional Convention. Sorry, Constitutional Convention in Philadelphia, and Madison was able to present his idea for an effective government system as in his Virginia plan, which detailed a government where three branches, the legislative, which is like your Congress, uh, executive, like your uh, president, governor, mayor, uh, your judicial, which is your federal court, your state court, your local court. Like your legislative could be your uh, Congress. It could be your state Congress. It could be your local Congress. Um, this plan would form the basis of the U.S. Constitution. Madison took detailed notes during debates at the convention which helped to further shape the U.S. Constitution and led to his monkier, father of the Constitution. Madison stated the Constitution, Constitution was not the offspring of a single brain, but instead the work of many heads and many hands. Once the new Constitution was written, it needed to be ratified by nine of the thirteen states, nine of the thirteen states, which is how we got the majority rule. Like in your Congress, you have for the Senate, since there's a hundred seats, you need fifty-one of the hundred seats to say yay or nay on it. And I forget exactly how many are in the House of Rep Representatives, but you need 51% of either saying yes or no to a said bill before it can be moved on to the next step. Um, that was not an easy process as many states felt the Constitution gave the federal government too much power. Supporters of the Constitution were known as the Federalists, while critics were called Anti-Federalist. Excuse me. Madison played a strong role in the ratification process and wrote a number of essays outlining 
his support for the Constitution. His writings, along with those uh, penned by other advocates, were released anonymously under the title The Federalist, a series of 85 essays produced between 1787 and 1788. After extensive debate, the U.S. Constitution was signed by members of the Con Constitutional Convention in September of 1787. The document was ratified by the states in 1788. The new government became functional the following year. Madison was elected to the newly formed U.S. House of Representatives where he served from 1789 to 1797. In Congress, he worked to draft the Bill of Rights, a group of 10 amendments to the Constitution that spelled out fundamental rights, such as freedom of speech and religion, held by U.S. citizens. The Bill of Rights was ratified by the states in 1791. In the new more powerful Congress, Madison and Jefferson soon found themselves disagreeing with the Federalists on key issues dealing with federal debt and power. For example, the two men favored states' rights and opposed Federalist leader Alexander Hamilton's, whose lifespan from 1755 to 1804, proposal for a national bank known as the Bank of the United States. In 1792, Jefferson and Madison founded the Democratic Republican Party, which had been labeled America's first opposition political party. Jefferson and Madison, or I'm sorry, Jefferson, Madison, and Monroe, whom we'll get on Topic. Excuse me. Later on, were the only de uh, Democratic Republicans ever to become U.S. presidents, as the party divided into competing factions in the 1820s. Um, Madison also had a new development in his personal life. In 1794, after a brief courtship. The 43-year-old Madison married 26-year-old Dolly Payne Todd, whose life spanned from 1768 to 1894, an outgoing Quaker widow with one son. Dolly's personality, personality contrasted sharply with that of the quiet, reserved Madison. She loved entertaining and hosted many receptions and dinner parties during which Madison could meet other influential figures of his time. During the couple's 41-year marriage, Dolly Madison and James Madison were reportedly rarely apart. In 1807, Madison and Jefferson enacted an embargo on all trade with Great Britain and France. The two European countries were at war and angered by America's neutrality, they had begun attacking US ships at sea. However, the embargo hurt America and its merchants and sailors more than Europe, which did not need American goods. Jefferson ended the embargo in 1809 as he left office. In the presidential election of 1808, Madison defeated Federalist candidate Charles Cottonsworth Pinickety, whose life spanned from 1745 to 1825 to become the nation's fourth chief executive. Madison continued to face problems from overseas as Britain and France had continued their attacks 
on American ships following the embargo. In addition to pending U.S. trade, Britain took U.S. sailors for its own Navy and began supporting American Indians in battles against U.S. settlers. In retaliation, Madison issued a war prop, excuse me, proclamation against Britain in 1812. However, America was not ready for a war. Congress had not properly funded or prepared any army. And a number of the states did not support what was referred to as Mr. Madison's War and would not allow their militias to join the campaign. Despite those setbacks, American forces attempted to fight off and attack British forces. The U.S. met defeat much of the time, both on and on land and at sea. But it was well-built ships provided to be a, a formidable foe. As the War of 1812 continued, Madison ran for re-election against Federalist candidate Dwight Clinton, whose life spanned from 1767 to 1828, who was also supported by an anti-war faction of the Department of the Democratic Republican Party and won. Despite the victory, Madison was often criticized and blamed for the difficulties stemming from the war. Trade stopped between U.S. and Europe, hurting American merchants once again. New England threatened secession from the Union. The Federalists undermined Madison's efforts, and Madison was forced to flee Washington, D.C., in August of 1814, as British troops invaded and burned buildings, including the White House, the Capitol, and the Liberty of Congress. Finally weary from battle, Britain and the U.S. agreed to negotiate an end to the war. The Treaty of Ghent was signed in December of 1814 in Europe. Before word of the peace agreement reached America, a major victory for U.S. troops at the Battle of New Orleans from December of 1814 to January of 1815 helped shine a positive light on the controversial war. Though the war was mismanaged, there, was, there were some key victories that embedded the Americans. Once blamed for the errors uh, in war, Madison was eventually hailed for his triumphs. After two terms in office, Jefferson or not Jefferson, Madison left Washington D.C. in 1817 and returned to Montpelier Monte with his wife. Despite the challenges he encountered during his presidency. Madison was respected as a great thinker, communicator, and statesman. He remained active in various civic causes and in 1826 became rector of the United S or University of Virginia, which was founded by his friend Thomas Jefferson. Madison passed at Montepeller on June 28, 1836, at the age of 85 from heart failure. And I will see you in the next one.